Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here and welcome back guys for another daily cryptocurrency market update. It is Saturday, the 26th of August 2023. And as always, we have a lot to get into. I'll quickly outline what we're going to be covering in this video. We're going to start things off by looking at some comments made by Jerome Powell, of course, at the Jackson Hole event that took place yesterday. Well, it's been going on um, Thursday and Friday, but of course, Jerome Powell came out publicly and gave a little bit of forward guidance on where he sees monetary policy. And of course, we live in a debt-based system and monetary policy massively impacts, impacts that. Thus, everything. Bond traders have often been, um, it's a bit of a joke that, you know, you want a friend as a bond trader because they are very much plugged into the system in regards to central bank policy. And, and often when the bond market moves, the kind of, we'll call it, I don't like using this term, but uh, God with a little g um, market moves, um, you know, everything typically moves also. The debt markets are the largest markets in the world. Um, and then they will ultimately move the markets that are um, under them. So we'll be looking at that. We're going to look at some interesting comments made by JP Morgan. This is a quote. It sees limited downside for crypto near term after Bitcoin's recent route. Now we're going to talk about that and we will be relating it to the charts. I have to admit short term, there's absolutely nothing that excites me about Bitcoin right now. Um, I need to see that strength coming in right now. What it's got going for it is the fact that it's holding support. Okay. And your uptrend is still intact, but it needs to see needs to see strength come in um, because if it doesn't and yesterday i had a very funny comment say, saying um take a drink every time all in crypto says a paper bag in the wind we were describing bitcoin and crypto as exactly that it's a paper bag in the wind the wind being mainly predominantly for me the dollar markets so the dixie usdt dominance and of course the yields which are the driver of all of that um relating this to central bank uh, policy, which we'll do in just a second, uh, and things like the stock market, which we did look at having a technical pullback. We did here speak about the possibility of a volatile move based on things like the Bollinger Bands, based on things like historic volatility. We just weren't sure in what direction. And of course, it led to the downside. Uh, and I think whenever there's a counter trend move, trend being what I believe, and we very accurately called since um, the start of the year, which is an uptrend, People are very quick to instantly um, change their stance on things. And, and, and we still maintain a very positive on the medium to longer term. So we're talking, I would say, a month plus um, outlook for Bitcoin and crypto generally. You know, we have always been very humble in saying, and remember, we didn't get caught up in any of the nonsense that took part in 2022. We were out of the market. We sold and we only got bit back in at the start of the year. I've always been very humble in admitting that we were never going to be able to time the perfect to the, 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 the point bottom. You know, potentially we may have for Bitcoin and we may have for some of our altcoins. Um, and certainly we, we, we probably caught a lot of the lows. We caught the majority of the lows, in fact. Um, but it's always been about finding a good entry from an investment point of view in a technology that I believe in, um, and far more than a technology, a, a movement that I believe in. Uh, and I do believe I've absolutely done that. Time will tell. I could be horribly wrong, um, but my money is well and truly where my mouth is um, in regards to that. And if you want to find my portfolio, uh, please do consider becoming a Patreon. We've got lots of things going on in there uh, and lots more to come. So that's enough of me shamelessly promoting myself and my community. Um, Let's get into it all. Let's start things off by looking at the Fed Chair Powell's calls yesterday. Inflation too high and warns that we are prepared to raise rates further. You could have essentially just played his old speeches yesterday. Uh, and and you, could have, you could have been playing them for the past six, seven months at this point. Um, they cannot take their foot off the gas. Everyone on Twitter is showing that schematic of the 1970s or whatever, whatever period it was where inflation went down like it has now and then spikes up and actually goes higher. There is a potentially a risk of that. Um, however, if you believe like I believe that inflation was caused predominantly, okay, yeah, there were bottlenecks in supply chains. We did have this war kick off. Um, but I believe inflation was predominantly caused by the inflation of the money supply to the tune of seven trillion. We looked at all this. I don't. I, I, I feel ashamed to be bringing up the M two again uh, because we've just done it so much. 
you know, I, I fundamentally believe that inflation, just like the markets going up, was caused by this insanity of a printathon where you nearly doubled the money supply. Um, at one point, pretty much so. Um, and I think that caused inflation predominantly more so than everything. So I think there's a lot of watch in regard to watch in regards to inflation. We were one of the only people that were actually very early on saying you're likely going to get a higher print and that we need to watch inflation based on the commodity basket that we watch and, and how you're getting a bit of basing for those. Uh, and of course, if, if inflation rises up, it's going to drive continued uh, rate hike policy. One thing that he reiterated, which stood out to me yesterday, was the fact that he had highlighted that you're seeing strong growth. And that they were expecting and, and predicting and, and, and could I say wanting periods of weaker growth that they weren't getting, which is kind of him saying, okay, well, this is this is giving us a bit of room here. Um, and of course, the yield markets, predominantly the two-year yield markets, we're still on a monthly chart here, um, which maybe is a good thing. Um, where's my US two-year? is a leader of the Fed funds. So we look at things technically. I'm a technical analyzer more more than I am anything. I'm, I'm still early on that journey, I think, you know, five years in now, um, seven years in crypto. Um, you know, it, but we look to the charts for forward guidance because the charts are a representation of people's positions uh, and money. And often, um, what do people care? Probably more so about than anything, that is money. So the charts for me are the truth. If this continues to go higher, and you've got my face on at the moment, which it is, then that is an indication that rates are going higher. And this currently has um, rates at 5%. Of course, we know the Fed funds is currently at 5.5%. Okay, so hmm, there's room. The probabilities of them doing another hike actually went slightly up. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not actually going to be in the business. I, my overall thinking is, and we've done a lot of looking at what happens when rates stop going up and the markets. People have got this notion that rates go up, markets must go down. What if I told you over the past 40 years, and don't take my word for it, go and look at the relationship between rates and the S&P, okay? which is a good barometer, certainly, certainly in the US. What if I told you that every time they upped interest rates, the stock market closed higher than when they stopped? Uh, first started interest rate rates to when they stopped them. So by the time they stopped interest rates, the stock market was higher than it was when they started them. Most people go, no, that, that that's impossible. Well, don't take my word for it. Go and look at it. So, but I do think predominantly they are very close to the end of rates. Um, you've got people calling for double digit rates. I think we would be living in an apocalyptic style world where pretty much every bank and pension that is stuffed with bonds would have collapsed at that point. However, that's just my own opinion. Maybe that's what the yield curve predicted. Who knows? There's lots of paths and avenues that things can can, can go down here. And of course, this is all driving Zedixi, which we've been very right on. And this is the thing that winds me up, guys. Um, We've been very right on the Dixie. We've got our levels here. Bit of a mm, spinning top, perhaps. Bit of an indecision candle. Doesn't mean too much yet. Uh, this is on the daily. But we've been very right on the Dixie, certainly in regards to this downtrend. But it is putting in what you could perceive to be a bit of a base. And now I'm kind of looking for a breakout maybe here. And if it does this, you're going to get a period of higher rates. Crypto is going to do this. Um, and that's likely going to have something to do with inflation and, and, and monetary policy. So this is really the, the, the big market for me to watch. Um, and then we can correlate it down to the smaller markets. And we know crypto right now is just really getting blown around in the wind. You know, CPI, core CPI is actually something they highlighted still being sticky. It has been downtrending quite nicely. Um, and then, of course, CPI, we've got the first higher print, and this is caused uncertainty for markets. So on the macro, there's a lot going on, and we need to factor all this into our short, mid to long term Predictions for crypto, bringing me on before we cover JP Morgan's comments, um, bringing me on to Bitcoin itself. Okay. I assess and I still assess that you are in a stage two breakout until you are not. So this is stage one. This is obviously stage four, stage three, stage two. Rinse and repeat. You'll see these stages throughout markets. We do try and teach stage analysis in the Discord because I do believe it is the simplest and best way for people to 
um, have a technical investment guide to the markets and you will be leaps and bounds ahead of your peers and hopefully never get wrecked again. Um, but you can find out more about that um, if you become a member. I and mean, we will, of course, be doing some sort of free stuff on it as well, because I do think, you know, the aim of this channel is to, is to help people wherever we can. Um, and I do think learning technical analysis is going to give you a huge edge over the market. So I still assess that this is a breakout. Volume actually confirms the breakout for now. The real question is, is do you lose this support? This is also support of your inverse head and shoulders. Once you start losing that, you are then in trouble. And right now, crypto show, it, it, there's, there's no excitement here, right? There's nothing in the short term that makes me excited. Short term is anything probably up to a month. Okay, September's historically a bad month for Bitcoin. We'll see what happens. Um, I do think bears are very premature at this point, claiming victory on this sell-off after being wrong for... It's like people that are now like max bearish on the stock market. Well, it's a very technical pullback. You've been wrecked thus far. Hmm. Uh, I, I, I think this is just a technical pullback. That's my overarching opinion. Uh, could it continue? Well, that's going to correspond with, with Bitcoin continuing. And could the dollar continue to show a bit of strength, which is going to correspond, of course, with uh, Bitcoin and the stock market continuing to the downside. There's nothing right now about Bitcoin that makes me excited. I wish I could say there was um, in terms of the short term. It's, I mean, even this range looks heavy, right? I wouldn't even say that's a range. I'd say this is the range. And you're just waiting for a confirmed break and hold in either direction. I mean, that is just, again, Bitcoin caper bag. Anytime you get any big movements in the other markets, it's going to move this because there's nothing here. And then you're very close to, or maybe get a bit more. Um, you're very close to this low. And you fail that low, you're then putting in a, a lower low. And this is only a marginally higher high. Um, so the, the moral of this story is we need to see dollar weakness and we need to see Bitcoin show a little bit of something. Uh, otherwise, you know, it, it doesn't look particularly exciting here uh, in the short term. It will just go with the path of least resistance. Stock market did see a bit of a bounce yesterday, but nothing spectacular. Um, there are a couple of stocks that I really want to pick up. Yes, that is in this environment. I want to pick them up. I think people are fundamentally wrong on calling a 2008 now. I think it's very easy to call that, but there's no, there's more evidence against that playing out in the short term than short to midterm, um, than people perhaps perceive it to be. People are very good, certainly when it comes to rates in regards to ignoring certain things and, and, and people have very good selective hearing. Um, you know, uh, anyway, so short term for Bitcoin. Still uncertain. It needs to show us what it's going to do first. I can't call that in regards to, I'd say at the moment, the probabilities are maybe more towards leading to the downside because it's not shown any strength and we've got a strong dollar uh, and a, a stock market that's slightly weak. However, this can show strength and turn around. And of course, you need to take out levels to the upside. Moving on to JP Morgan's news. JP Morgan sees limited downside for crypto near term after Bitcoin's recent drop. Let's get into what they have said. The recent sell-off in crypto markets is likely near an end, with long positions liquidations largely behind us, according to research report from JP Morgan Chase and Co. Let's move on. The fading of some positive legal and regulatory news induced a wave of sell in recent weeks that is still uh, reverberating, so it's still going on, though the unwinding appears to be at the end phase based on the open interest in CME Bitcoin future contracts. Analysts include Nicholas something, I'm not going to try and say that, uh, wrote on Thursday. A decline in open interest, the number of unsettled and active futures contracts trading on exchanges typically indicates a price trend is losing strength. Okay, as a result of this, we see limited downside for crypto markets over the near term. They said Bitcoin, the largest crypto token, was down 0.2%, blah, blah, blah. Earlier in the summer, Bitcoin got a burst. Some enthusiasts talk about ETFs and, and things like this. This is the main thing that Bitcoin has going for it right now from a price point of view on the short term is the fact that it's holding support. This is, again, for me, a confirmed breakout. 
call me crazy. I know there's a lot of negative news. I really couldn't care about the news, to be honest. We're not news traders. This was a good volume on the breakout, and this was a good volume on the retest. And now, whoa, bloody hell. What's going on? And now you want to see volume again here. And it's in the right place to get that, but it needs to get that. Okay. Um, you look at things like GBTC. It looks quite good, to be honest. Um, this looks good. You know, is this just a retest also? What are we doing here? Mm, there's, there's a lot to look at, I think. Let's look at the uh, Bitcoin futures. Hopefully I've not drawn all over this. I probably would have at some point. It's just, I mean, got to show strength here, guys. Um, you never ever want to be in a position where you're relying, and this is why I don't have any leverage longs on right now, um, or even shorts, because I'm, I'm a little bit uncertain. You never want to be in a position where you're hoping something is going to go in your favor. You want to be as a trader um, in a position where there's a reason that you can have clear points of invalidation at to be long or short, certainly if you're using leverage, which most people in crypto shouldn't even be touching, in my opinion. I do think that's how you'll lose all your money on the on the kind of promise of grandeur. Um, but right now, again, it, for, for me, it's a sit on hands moment for Bitcoin. You know, we're still spot long from an investment point of view, but from a um, short term, again, week, couple of weeks into a month, no longer than a month, you know, I'm not really sure what Bitcoin's price is going to do on the short term. It needs to show us um, direction in one in, in one kind of way or the other. Anyway, I've rambled on for 17 minutes now, guys. And that is all I've got for you. Um, JP Morgan could indeed be right. But the question is, is, you know, in the near term, that again, you, you know, you could have a, a dodgy September coming out of it. We'll see. You also could have a load of ETFs approved in September, which could absolutely send it. In the same way that you had BlackRock officially filing an ETF. Uh, where's my draw tool? Sending things here. So that was a comprehensive daily market update. On that note, guys, I'm going to love and leave you. If you've enjoyed the content, like us, appreciate those a comment, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next.